us away, make 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 us away. So make us away, make us away, make us away. We wanna know you there. We wanna know you there. Come on, can you see that out of this room too? Make us away, make us away, make us away. But your presence is all around us. Make us away, make us away, make us away. And we're not separated from you. Make us away, make us away, make us away. Tell him I love you. I love Jesus. Worship and adore you. I worship and adore you. I want to tell you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you. Lord, and Yes, Lord. Ecclesiastes chapter number nine. Now listen, y'all, I, 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 if you have pad and pencil, I want you to dot down these notes, dot down these scriptures. If you, you, you want to use your iPad or a cell phone or computer, laptop, whatever you want to use to take these notes because I do not need you to hear this as just uh, sermonic. I need you to hear it as God speaking to us to prepare us, Brandon, for what's about to happen. How many people in this room beside I truly believe, not because, not because I'm just asking the question, little girl, but truly believe, truly believe in your heart's heart that 2020 will continue to be epic for you. Leave them up so, so I can make sure I'm in the midst of the right people. I mean, you truly believe that what you are embarking upon will be epic. Then tell someone to help me with my message and tell someone it will be epic. It will be epic. Ecclesiastes, little girl, chapter number 9, 10 and 11. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. Listen to this. For there is no work nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whither thou goest. Exhaust you, beloveds, because once you take your last breath, that's it. Give the most of you. You have nothing to lose. Nothing to lose. I want you to watch me real quick. Would you help me stand up in this chair for a minute, will you, son? Someone with a coin, Eugene, you have a coin, a quarter, a nickel, dime, anyone got a coin? Anyone have a coin? You got it, Esther? Quarter? I know y'all so bougie, y'all don't carry coins. It, right, you know. Oh, I don't carry coins. I, uh, quarter, that'll work. I want y'all to watch this illustration, and I'm gonna get back to the lesson. Everyone look, young and old. Young people, look. I want you to look. Can you see me? Try to get an eye, at least on the corn. I read several years ago, and it impacted my life. I was flying to California to preach Los Angeles. And I read an caption in the magazine that said, Life is like a corn that you must spend, but you can only spend it once.
exhaust you. It's time for the world to experience you. I'm going to say that again. I say it's time for the world to experience you. Your anointing, your flavor, your disposition, your personality. Tell two people, tell them it's time for life to experience you. So I'm going to say this one more time. God Almighty, Justin, I'm about to lose it up in here. Whatsoever thy hand find it to do, do it. With all thy might. With all thy might. For there is no work. Nor device. Nor knowledge. Nor wisdom. In the grave. And you're going there. Solomon went on to say this. He said I returned and saw under the sun. That the race is not given to the swift. Nor the battle to the strong. Neither yet bread to the wise. Nor yet riches to men of understanding. Nor yet favor to men of skill. Watch this. Key to it. But time and chance happen it to them all. But opportunity happens to all of us. It's God's responsibility to give you the opportunity. It's up to you to take advantage of it. So I'm going to teach you real quickly things that I've learned down through the years that have been uh, paramount in my life. And it's five must to achieve in this epic season. Father, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Five must. Now some of you I may make a little mad because some of you, uh, your hindrance I want you to hear me now. Your hindrance, as much as, as, as you've made it Satan, because uh, we have been adept at blaming our demise upon Satan. The devil is a liar. That's what we say. This ain't nothing but the devil. I remember, you know, rarely do I have the devil speak to me, but this is one of those rare opportunities uh, a time that he spoke to me when someone said that it was a devil and the devil spoke to me and he said I didn't I didn't do that <laughs> and I tried to rebuke him but when I looked at it he was telling the truth five essentials five must to achieve in this epic season. Now listen y'all. You're not going to shout. We've already praised God. If you didn't get your shout in a few minutes ago. Don't expect to shout no more. Look at somebody real quick. And say, Put your dancing shoes back in your purse. <laughs> Number one. Write it down. Put it wherever you want to put it. And hopefully we can get the, the CD or DVD if you want it. Number one. To achieve in this epic season. You must have good, healthy, a good, healthy, balanced attitude. I'm going to say that again. You must have a good, healthy, balanced attitude. You cannot go into this next season with your attitude all over the place. One minute your attitude is pleasurable to be around. The next year, next time you like the wicked witch of the West. We don't know which one of you going to walk through the door. I'm going to help you now. How many people in this room beside me? And I want you to be honest. I want you to be honest, real honest with me and look at me. Look at me. I want you to be real honest. How many people in this room really want to go into 2020 dealing with people with bad attitudes? You raise your hand. You must have misunderstood that question. Let me say it again. I said, how many want to go into 2020 dealing with a bunch of people with bad attitudes? Now, if you're saying you don't want to deal with people with bad attitudes, how do you think people feel about you when you're coming on the scene with a bad one? People don't have time for that anymore. People don't want to deal with that anymore. People rather be by themselves than be with somebody with a bad attitude. I'd rather walk alone than walk with somebody with a whole lot of drama. 
I don't need your amen. I know this has been ordained by God. I'd rather walk by myself. I'd rather go to lunch my, by myself than to be at lunch with you. And you going off on the, on the waitress. You went off on the cook. You done, you done call the cook out the back. Come here. Didn't I tell you to fry my chicken a certain way? That, nobody wants that. That's too much. That's, that's too much. Can I get an amen up in here? That's too much. And listen to this. It stifles your success. Yes, it does, Gina. It stifles. It hinders your success. People are not going to provoke, promote that because it has a spirit attached to it. Next thing you know, others in the department acting just like you. You're not going to be promoted with that kind of drama. It must be balanced. It must be balanced. Leave your issues at the house. Don't take your issues to work and don't take your work to home. You mad at somebody on the job. You done walked in and kicked the cat across the sofa. I must have some cat cook kickers in here. I've got, you done kicked it. I mean, threw the dog out in the backyard. Took his bowl. That's too much. That's too much. You must have a balanced attitude, a balanced spirit. Balance. Consistent. Some of you are too inconsistent. I knew you were going to be quiet, but that's, I'm cool. You need balance. Consistency. Consistency. You don't see me come to church, Bible class, or nothing else. And you look at me like, God, what's wrong with pastor today? Oh, no. That's too much stress. Being mean is stressful. Oh, yes, it is, Henry. Being mean is stressful. Being mean take away from your life. Yes, it does. Being nice, I add to your life. And, and, and for all you macho dudes that think that being nice and being sensitive and being caring make you weak, that's a lie. Because only strong men can be. Oh, God. If you got to cuss everybody out and you got to make all these demands and pound your chest and walk in like you King Kong and all that, you're weak. Because when you know who you are, you don't have to do that. I don't have to pound my chest to be the man of my house. I know I'm the man of the house. She's the woman of the house, but I'm the man of the house. Amen. amen. Oh, well, y'all equal. No, we're not. That's not Bible. That's not Bible. We're not equal. We are not equal. I'm the head of the house. That's my responsibility. If something go wrong, y'all ain't gonna blame Lady Martin. She let the house, you gonna say Bishop did. That's my responsibility to cover her. Amen, that's my responsibility to cover her. To be consistent. Are you hearing me? Can I go a little further? Good, healthy, good, healthy, balanced attitude, healthy. Some of you are taken away from your life. It's unhealthy the way you're conducting yourself. It's unhealthy the way you're presenting yourself. It's unhealthy. It's taking away from your life. It's subtracting from your life. From you enjoying life. You all on vacation going off on people. <laughs> you on a cruise and almost got in a fight with the. <laughs> oh, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I can't call no names, but. <laughs> Tell him on the show and say, is he talking about you? Because you got quiet. How you go be on vacation, land out on the beach, and because they didn't bring you your towel fast enough, you done walked up on some. Let me go a step further. Oh, I'm going to help you, Jesse. I promise you. Good, healthy, balanced attitude. Now, let's go to some scriptures. Proverbs. Probably look at Proverbs chapter number 17. Write these scriptures down and mark them in your Bible. And for those of you who don't believe in writing in your Bible, get you one you can write in. Highlight, okay? 
Proverbs 17. Look at 17 and 22. Proverbs 17 and, and 22. You there? It says, a merry heart doeth good. I got to be more expeditious. Like a medicine. But a broken spirit drieth the bones. Hear that again. Hear that again, y'all. Hear that again, Pam. It said that a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. But a broken spirit drieth the bones. A broken spirit. You're drying up from the inside out. That's why you look so mean all the time. You look mean even when you're happy. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Well, it sure don't look like it. Y'all know the kind of people I'm talking about. I mean, even when they're having a good time, they look mean. <laughs> I try to do it, can't even do it. It dryeth the bones. It eats up from the inside out. And now you're looking like your insides. Because when you're mean-spirited, that's an internal problem. That's not an external problem. Because no matter how you treat me, you can't make me be mean to you. Now, I may rebuke you. I may get you off, off, off me, but I ain't going to be mean-spirited with it. Talk to me. There's a difference between being stern and being mean. It dries the bones. Give you another scripture. Go to Romans 12. And you want this going into where God has taken you so you won't hinder what God has desired to do. If you're anything like me, you don't want another door to open that God has to close. Do something for me and tell somebody near you to me. I need all my doors open. I think you're sitting next to the wrong person because maybe they're not accept, expecting the door. But if you think you're sitting by someone that's expecting the door, tell them, I need all my doors open. <laughs> Romans 12, chapter number 10. Listen to this now. This is church, uh, Paul to the church at Rome. He said, be kindly affection one to another, yes, to one another, with brotherly love in honor, preferring one another. What does that mean, Pastor? That means treat others in a way, treat others in a way that you put them in some cases above you. It can't always be about you. Probably it can't always be about you. Sometimes it needs to be about others. Are you okay? Can I do anything to help you? If you need me, give me a holler. It can't always be about you. Everything has to evolve around you. If it don't evolve around you, ain't nothing happening. It can't always evolve around you. And I promise you, it's medicine to you. If you take the time to involve yourself with the issues of others, it'll heal you. Many times when we're going out to minister to others and they're telling us or telling me how much I'm blessing them and many times they don't know how much they're blessing me. That's right. It's a blessing to be a blessing to somebody else. Amen. Some of us are so caught up in self it's going to hinder what God is desiring to do in your life because what God desires to do in your life is more, is more, is not just about you, it's about someone else. God is too broad based to do something in your life and it's just for you. And it's just for you. I know this is elementary, but I want you to get it. Matthew chapter number five. I know y'all, some of y'all sitting there waiting on an ooh word, but you ain't going to get one. Yeah. Ooh this. Yeah. Ooh Matthew chapter number five, verse number 16. Yeah. Let your light so shine before men 
that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Stop right there. I should be balanced in my behavior, in my attitude, that when people watch the jacket, when people experience me, they glorify God. When I come into your presence, when I'm in your midst, it should glorify God. Yes, sir, Bishop. You should feel better because we cross paths. Yes. Amen. Have you ever been around somebody and when you leave, you got to pray? <laughs> oh, yeah, I wish I had some real people. You had to pray? You feel like you need to go in a closet and just lay out because... Of, Amen. You feel like you were in spiritual warfare just having a conversation with them. I hate that. And all you deepers want to show how deep you are and think that's going to glorify God. It's not. You're scary. They said, what? <laughs> Who wants to experience? We're just having a conversation. I was talking to somebody about the cowboys. And they talking about, oh, God showed me the spirit. I said, baby. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't roll with that. I don't, I, I don't have to see in the spirit. Are you understanding what I'm saying? That's weird. That's not healthy. You go jerk your neck out of place. I mean, who want to deal with that? Where are we going to eat? I don't know. I'm praying. But, well, while you praying, I'm going to go get me some chicken. Yeah. I'm gonna give me a two-piece. <laughs> some fries and a pepper. And a strawberry soda water. While they praying, you know. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Let's go to number two. Did you get that? Your attitude, dear heart. Your attitude. Do something for me and touch anybody and tell them, be mindful of your attitude. So it won't hinder what God desires to do. Number two, laser-like focus on the goal. In 2020, you must have laser-like focus on the goal. Isaiah chapter number 50. Isaiah 50, look at 7. For the Lord God will help me. Therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like flint. Look at me. Laser like focus. Isaiah said, therefore have I set my face like flint. Have I set my face like flint. Check me out for a minute. Therefore, have I set my face like flint. Going forward, Christy, you got to set your face like flint. Because you're going to have distractions. And you never know which direction it's going to come from. It can be in people, places, or things. You got to set your face like flint. I got too much in front of me to be sideswiped. To be sidebarred by non-God issues. I ain't got nothing but love for you. Amen. But I've set my face like Flint. Yes. Yes, sir. I've got to remain focused on my goal in front of me. I'm expecting great things to happen in my life in 2020. And I can't allow you and your folly. I can't allow you and your foolishness. I can't allow you and your flesh. I got to set like Flint. Like Flint. Like Flint. Yes. Like Flint. <laughs> Get your goal in mind. What you're expecting in mind. Yes. Your dreams, your visions, your aspirations. And set your face like Flint. Yes, sir. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> set your face like Flint. Yes, sir. You're going to have oppositions. Yes. Yes. Satan will dispatch. 
demonic forces, Yolanda, yes, yes, yes. to come down and distract you, yes, yes. to get you off focus. Yes. So you want to accomplish what God yes. has assigned to you. Yes. Set your face like flint. Amen. Are y'all looking at me? Yes. Look at me one more time. Set your face like flint. Yes, sir. Set your face like flint. Yes, Look at me. Set your face like flint. Yes. Set your face like Flint. Mm -hmm. Esther, set your face like Flint. Oh you had some distractions in this past season, seasons. This time you got to set your face like Flint. Yes. Yes. You got to be so focused on what you're trying to do that you'll let nothing separate you from it. Yeah. I ain't got nothing but love for you. Amen. But if you're not a part of where I'm going, I can't be dragging dead weight. Oh, y'all don't hear me. The Bible said lay aside every sin. And we focus on the text. We focus more on the sin. But he made them equal. He said, don't just lay aside the sin. He said, lay aside the weight. Go to God. I can't be dragging dead weight. That's hindering me from reaching my goal. Oh, some of you don't like what I'm saying. Tell anybody in this room. Tell them, lay it aside. Lay it aside. Let me help you. Everybody's not a part of your 2020. I'm going to say that one more time. I say everybody's not a part of your 2020. Last time saying it. I said everybody is not a part of your 2020. You may have to let Pookie and Ray Ray go. And all you ladies that got a man that's making you think that you can't survive without him. Well, I done got quieter. Mm -hmm. You better remind yourself who you are. I said, you better remind yourself who you are. I dare every woman in this room who know you are to get on your feet and put your hands on your hip and let your backbone slip and say, oh, yeah, I can make it, girl. I can make it. Mm. I, I don't want to make the men mad. I don't want to. And, and, and listen, all you sorry men, that don't want your wife or your woman to survive without you, you're a sorry joker. I want my wife to be able to survive. If something happened to me, I want her to still live. I want to walk up here like she's still first lady. Well, Bishop, he dead, but I'm still here. Yeah, Mother Mary, I'm trying to tell you. See, that's sorry. You used to want somebody in your life to, that, that wants you to make it with them or without them. Same way with ladies. Oh, now, now we ain't got nothing. Ain't no, ain't no female, amen. You should want your man to be able to make it without you. Amen. Show him how to cook some beans. Come on in here. Let me show you how to cook these beans in case something happened to me. No, put some hog maw. They call it hog maw, whatever. Yeah. Salt Joe. Mama, how you cook beans? Where my mama at? Uh, can, let me go to the next one. Look at, look at Psalm 62. Is this helping you? I want y'all to get this, dear hearts. I really do. Psalm 62 and 6. Look at this. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. Watch this. Laser-like focus. On the goal. I shall not be moved. If you don't take anything away from this little dissertation. I hope you get that one Henry. You must go into 2020. Letting the hearts of hell. The indigenous of hell know. I will not be moved. Now, I know everyone in this room. is not, are not, You're not bold enough. To declare that and put that in the atmosphere. I only want the handful of us. Who's bold enough here today. That you will signal to the demons of hell. That you will not be moved. In this coming season. I want you to say it as loud as you can. Say devil I will not be moved. Devil, will not be moved. That's not good enough. Because when we say it on the right tone. Something is going to happen in the spirit realm. Something is going to break for some of us in the spirit realm. I want you to say it this time, and I want you to jump on your feet and let the devil hear you say, I said, devil, I will not be moved. Devil, 
there is too much at stake for me. For, the, you, for me to allow you to toss me and drive me with every wind of doctrine. With every little thing that you may blow in. I will not be moved. I will not be knocked off course. With those subtle hints that you come with. I will not be moved with your antics. I will not be moved with your suggestions. I will not be moved just because I'm going through a little something. I will not be moved just because I'm being tested. I will not be moved just because I lost a few pennies. I will not be moved just because somebody left out of my life. I will not be moved. Just because I'm going through a few changes, I will not be. Boy, y'all gonna make me preach it a minute. I feel something in my sanctified soul. I will not be moved. I will not sink or swim. I will not be moved. If I make my bed in heaven, I will not be moved. If I make my bed in hell, I will not be moved. If I take the wings of the morning and fly away to the uttermost part of the earth, I will not be moved. I want you to say it one more time to the devil. I will not be moved. I will not be moved. If I'm going through changes, I will not be moved. Going to God, if I lose this apartment, I will not be moved. Yeah. If they lay me off, I will not be moved. If they hand me a pink slip, oh God have mercy, I will not be moved. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Will you tap somebody on the shoulder and say, I will not be moved. I, I will not. I've got too much in front of me. I will not be moved. Laser like focus. Let me go to the next one. My time is running up. And this one, next one, is really important. I will not be moved. That in 2020, this is my prayer for many of you in this room, because you're too fickle, you're too weak. I'm sorry, but you're just too weak. And you're not going to make it until you get in God's word and let God's word strengthen you. All you people that just come to church on Sunday, wanting your ears to be tickled, Tyson words of man's wisdom. I can give you all that. You need more than that. So my next one, and this is my prayer, Marsha, for many of us in this room, because Satan is whooping some of our hind hind parts. The devil is getting the best of some of us in here. Amen. That God would give you a thick, tough skin that endures. Some of you, your skin is too thin. Any little thing bother you. Any little thing knock you off course. I mean any little thing knock you off course. You got to be tougher than that. Soak this in. You got to be tougher than that. Satan desires to have each of us that he may sift us as wheat. Some of us, our, thin, our skin is too thin. Any little thing angles you. You fly off the handle on any little thing. You become almost a terrorist. If somebody don't even look at you the right way. Maybe they didn't see you. See, that's what I'm talking about. Go walk right past me. See, I didn't see you. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Just maybe they weren't ignoring you. Maybe they just didn't see you. Right. I mean, look in a little thing, and you fly off the handle. God is quiet in this church. You, 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 I know you're listening. I'm being facetious. It's quiet up in here. Stay quiet. Thick, tough skin to endure. Thick, tough skin that endures. Jeremiah 1. Jeremiah 1. I know this is helping somebody. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. It's helping more to me and you. Because I've learned, I've learned, thin skinned people, listen to this, Satan has a field day. 
The Bible says he go about looking for whom he made a vow. And I'm going to tell you who he used to run up on. It's thin-skinned people. Because thick-skinned people will back him up. Satan, you are a liar. Satan don't just, Satan don't, and this might sound self-serving, but hear me now. The devil don't just run up on man. He can. He has. But ask me, don't I deal with him? Satan, if you don't get behind me, and you're not a devil, you can be minding your business, you can be riding down the street. I mean playing going up yonder. <laughs> and the devil will come out of n- <laughs> Who in this room know what I'm talking about? Amen. You can be cooking dinner. Just finished fried chicken and rice and with butter on it and, and thick biscuits and that. And you get ready to sit down and tear it up and here he comes. With a suggestion. And you're like, devil, if you don't get away from me. And then some of us are like, show you. <laughs> show you. Oh, Lord, oh, no, what do we do, man? Oh, devil, you do that, devil. Oh, Lord, oh, no, what do we do? Oh, I'm. <laughs> I'm doing it the black folk way. Go, you know, black folk when they, yeah, they, you know. <laughs> we got to put that black folk drama in it. You just want to come and give them a, here's your, your, your award for this performance. <laughs> it's true, mother. So when black folk go in, we don't, we don't cry. Cute. <laughs> you think the person died. <laughs> Y'all know it's the truth. I can see Steph on the Look, I tried that one time with God. <laughs> then prayer meeting, I tried that with God. I was feeling sorry for myself. I went to church, look good, and I, I mean, I gave, I bore, I put on an Academy Award performance. I laid on that floor, I kicked this screen. Ay, 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 God, where are you? Where are you? you told me, God, is you, you said that, you breathe out for me, you said, you, I'm with you always, even to the end of, where are you? I finished, and Lord spoke to me. He said, are you through? (laughs) (laughs) What do you mean am I through? I need a miracle. (laughs) I need you to dispatch an angel. Thick skin. Jeremiah 1. In your, in your leisure time, read Jeremiah 1, 4 through 8. Go to Ezekiel 2 and 6. I, this is one I want to pull on you. In your leisure time, put that down so you can go back to it. Jeremiah 1, 4 through 8, okay? Look at Ezekiel chapter number 2. This is one I want to work with a minute. Thick skin. Tough. And thou son of man, verse number six, be not afraid of them. Get this, y'all. Be not afraid of them. Neither be afraid of their words, the briars, rebels, and thorns be with thee. Mm -hmm. And thou dost well among scorpions. Be not afraid of their words nor be dismayed by their looks, though they be a rebellious house. Listen to this, y'all. Thick skin. I've said this before, and it bears repeating. Two of the greatest deliverance, Brandy, that God could ever wrought in your life, 
Number one is to deliver you from sin. Number one is to deliver you from sin. Number two is to deliver you from people. One of the greatest deliverance God made in my life was when he delivered me from y'all. When I say y'all, I'm not talking about necessarily the people in this room. I'm talking about people, period, Christian. Because until God delivers you from people, you'll be more concerned about what people think than what he thinks. I have learned this in my life, that people will always have an opinion. This is better than y'all responding. People will always have an opinion. I have made the decision that everybody's opinion don't matter. Why should I worry about your opinion when you don't even like me? Oh, Renee, why should I worry about what you think about me when I know you don't like me? Because when you don't like me, you're going to always find fault in me. You're worried about people who don't even like you, who don't even care for you, and you're worried and concerned about their opinion. God delivered me from people, and I'm so glad he did. Someone came to me a few years back and said, you know, bitch, I need to tell you what so-and-so. I said, I don't even care. So some of y'all looking at me like, he's just so arrogant. I don't care. I don't even care that you think I'm arrogant. Because I mean that. Son, I mean that. Would you do something for me and tell two people in this room, tell them, get over people. I think I'm in the wrong church. I want you to tell them one more time. Say, no, get over people. Get, get over people. You mind me telling your testimony when you were going into the modeling and you called me? Remember? It's my daughter, my spiritual granddaughter. She called me back in the day, and she's a model, professional model, professional model. Amen. I love her with all my heart. But a few years ago, she called me, but I forgot how many years ago, two or three, four, five years ago, how many it was. And, and because she was going into the industry and she would have to model certain garments and, you know, some of it was lingerie, some of it was clothing, whole nine yards. And, 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 and she was concerned because uh, of people, Christians, who may view her differently because she's wearing certain type of clothing. I said, first of all, that's just a job. That's not who you are. You're just doing your job as a model. And I said, furthermore, it ain't their business. Amen. You model how your business. I said, but God don't look at the outward. As long as your heart is still true to God. As long as your heart is yet true toward God, you don't worry about people. So you go in and model all your stuff. Get me on camera, Otis. <laughs> One more time, tell somebody, get over people. You will never accomplish anything significant in life overly concerned about people. Because people will always have an opinion. They will always have an opinion. She took that to heart, and now she's becoming one of the most successful models in the country. In 2020, I want to be one of the success stories in the world. Oh, oh, we got haters now, we got haters. We got haters. Come on, celebrate your sister.
And my prayer for her after that, after that, Esther was, God toughens, toughen her skin. That she don't allow men to cause her to abort her assignment. Because whether you believe it or not, there are people in the modeling industry that need Jesus. Glory to God. Hebrew chapter number 11. I'm just about there, y'all. Is this helping us? Is this blessing us? Hebrew chapter number 11. Chapter number 11. I want you to look at one verse. Verse number 27. Look at it. Verse number 27. By faith, he forsook, referring to Moses, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Let me tell you something to help me. And I will be eternally grateful when I stand before God. I want y'all to hear this. When I stand before God and appreciate God for what he's been in my life, one of the things that I will appreciate him the most is God giving me the ability to stay focused and not allow people to over-influence my life. In an ill-gotten way. I will be forever grateful. When we went through those changes as a church. And all the naysayers. The boisterousness of the winds. Kept coming in. You start hearing everything. I am grateful to God. That God did not allow me. To become focused on what I was hearing. And not what he said. Before I go to the next one, I want you to tell two people, tell them, stay focused. focused. Tell them one more time. At this time, say it until something break in them. Tell them, stay focused. focused. The next one, the next one. Now, some of you, some of you uh, traditionalists may have a problem with the next one. The next one is a belief in self. Get this now. If you're going to go forward in 20 20 and the seasons to come you must have a belief in yourself Amen. one of the things that has blessed me little girl in your modeling is the confidence that you exude Amen. that blesses me That's right. yes. now her brother is going into the same industry now the Lord is blessing both of them Amen. yes sir I'm going to say something to you. It's not a rebuke. It's just a heads up. I saw you put something on Facebook the other day talking about your haters. Never do it again. Right, right. Don't even, that's right. Don't even give it to them. Don't even acknowledge them. Right. Right. Never give energy to your hater. Never. When you give energy to your hater, you empower them. The greatest thing that you can ever do to your enemy, watch this, is to keep on pushing. This is better than y'all responding, boy. Oh, there's some good stuff here. There's some good. the, The best thing you can do to your enemy, the people that don't care about you, the people that don't like you, is to keep pushing. Because when your enemy leave, they expect you to go down because they left. But when you keep on pushing, tell somebody real quick, tell them keep on pushing. Keep on making money. Keep on walking through doors. Keep on being successful. Keep on being prosperous. Keep on being, as Lady Martin would say, keep on being all that. Look up and down your row and tell them keep on being all that. I'm trying not to preach, but I feel something in my sanctified soul. I said, look up and down your one more time and tell them, keep on being all that. While your enemy is talking, keep on being all that. 
while they're lying on you, keep on being all that. While they're hating on you, keep on being all that. One more time, keep on being all that. On being all that. Oh now, King, I said I don't want to do that. I just felt something. To tell somebody today, you're going to be all that. I just feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I dare you to shake a neighbor by the hand. Say, neighbor, God said, get ready because you're going to be all that. I wish I had some believers up in here. I wish I had some sanctified believers up in here. I need a witness, Jesse. I want you to get your good neighbor and rise on your feet. I said, neighbor, God said, Keep on being all that. He's about to bless you. He's about to prosper you. He's a. I dare you, Jerry. I dare you to tell all the people on your turn, you're gonna be all that. 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 Hate on hater. You're gonna be all that. Hate on haters. You're gonna be all that. Hate on haters. You're gonna be. I see you, girl. I'm, I'm, I'm closing, I'm closing, I'm closing. But I need you to do something, Bobby. I need you to tell anybody, tell them, you're going to be all that. You're going to be all that. You're going to be all that. <laughs> Some of you ain't hearing me right now. But for Proverbs 23 and 7, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if you don't think you're going to be all that, you probably ain't going to be all that. But for everybody that believes you're going to be all that, uh, jump on your feet and put your hands on your hip and say, I'm going to be all that. Look at your neighbor with a little pride and say, I'm going to be all that. If you hate me now, you're going to really hate me later. If you don't like me now, you're really not going to like me later because I'm going to be all that. High five three people and say, all that, all that, all that, all that, all that, all that. You're sitting by the wrong person. You're sitting by the wrong person. Because spirits transfer. You need to sit by somebody that believes they're going to be all that. So when God start blessing you, they ain't got to hate on you. Shake a neighbor's hand. Say, neighbor, I'm going to be all that. Say yeah. yeah. Go with your God. Go with your God. Everybody that will see that quick prophecy, I just want you to walk around your little space like you're all that. Make the devil man just walk around your little area. Strut your stuff. Strut your stuff like you're all that. Walk like you're all that. Strut like you're all that. Move like you're all that. Smile like you're all that. Drive like you're all that. Live like you're all that. Spin like you're all that. Yes, I need some all that believers. Go back your head. Open your mouth and praise him like you're all that. Go with your God. Go with your God. I'm sorry, y'all. I didn't mean that outburst. And I would let you go right now, but I, I got one more. I got one more. I got one more. I got one more, Jerry. How many people in this room believe that you're about something? You really believe you're about something? Okay, let me help you. Let me help you right here. Go, go, to, go to Psalms 139. Psalms 139. I told you I had many scripture for today, and I'm sorry. I'm, I tell you now, I'm gonna be over my time. I'm gonna be over my time, but it's Christmas time, season of giving. <laughs> yeah, so let me give you this. <laughs> right. 
Steve's going to give it, so let me give you this. Look at this now. This is going to help you out. Belief in yourself. Look at verse number 13. Elder Blair. For thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee. For I am fearfully. And wonderfully made. Look at somebody. Say, when God finished with me, he had to break the mold. I have been fearfully. And wonderfully made. When God made me, he thought about it. What you say? What you say? He took into account what he had assigned me to. And so when he made me, he considered my dwellings. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Get on your neighbor's nerve and tell him, I'm all that, I'm all that. So the next time somebody talk about you and they want to say, she thinks she all that. Tell them, well, I am all that. <laughs> No, 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 no. Tell him one more time. Oh, I am all that. Next time a gentleman call her, try to ride up on you and say, she thinks she all that. What you going to say? <laughs> gentlemen, next time a woman go treat you bad, like, what's the boy named Brad Brown? Uh, you did my friend like that. I, I don't know the song. I just heard the words. You did my friend like that. I'm afraid you're going to do me like that. Chris Brown. Y'all know I don't know the song. I know Pass Me Not Gentle Savior, you know. I need y'all help. Now, don't sit and act like you don't listen to it either. What kind of church is this? Yeah. This church got, needs some medicine. You hear me? I, I don't get any time to pray for me. Where was I before I was so rudely interrupted? We was on Chris Brown. Now we, we was on Proverbs. Psalms. Yeah, you see that? I'm back in the book. Y'all still with Chris Brown. You and I, listen to this, dear heart, so I can close. You and I have been fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When God finished with you, he said, Mwah. Yes, sir. Bravo. <laughs> Those of you that wasn't here last Sunday, you don't know what we're talking about. But just say, Bravo, Bravo. When he finished making you, he said, yeah. he checked you out from the inside out. He saw all the inner workings. And he looked at you, Loretta, and he said, a masterpiece. She is exactly the way I need her to be, to be what I've called her to be. Mm -hmm. Stop trying to be anybody else, Regina. Because when God finished with you, he said, ah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Stop trying to be anybody but you. Ah. You are all that. Now watch this, dear hearts. Now if God can see you that way, wonder. Why can't you see yourself that way? Mm -hmm. You are all that. You are all that. If you're single, there's somebody that needs somebody exactly like you. Mm -hmm. I ain't trying to be tall. <laughs> mm 
<laughs> you got a big heart. Yes, sir. Oh, you looking for tall, dark, and handsome? Ain't nothing wrong with short, dark, and handsome either. Oh, you looking for Tyra Banks? You better go find Lula Banks. At least Lula a cook. Tyra won't ball an egg. <laughs> and fooling with you, Tyler. <laughs> this fleshly musician tell me to leave Tyra alone. <laughs> what kind of musician is this? Let me, let me finish. I got seven minutes. I'm well past my time. I'm, I'm, I apologize in advance. I hope you, how many want the last one? I'm, let me ask a question. Is this really helping you? If, you? if you've really been blessed by this teaching, would you give the Lord a hand? Good. Don't play that preacher. Last one. Are you ready for the last one? Yes. Psalms 139. Let me, let me finish reading Psalm 139. Can I do that? Yes. Church, can I do that? Yes. Psalms 139. You have been fearful and wonderful made. Marvelous are thy works that thy soul knoweth right well. Verse number 5. 15, rather. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret. You didn't just make me, God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But after you made me, you put me in a secret place. And you made sure, Ann, that I had all the necessaries. That when I came forth, I can be what you have purposed me to be. Last one. Last one. What's number one? What was it? Give it to me. Attitude. Number two. Number three. What is it? Number four. Number five. Finally. Somebody push you on the out of here. Just. just, just to see, I just push you on out that door. <laughs> it's crazy, the church, ain't it? It's crazy. The last one. Last one. Last one. Last one. Unwavering trust and faith in God. We can't continue to be tossed and driven with every wind of doctrine. Anything hell harrows our way. A couple of scriptures and I'll let you go. Proverbs chapter number three. A couple of scriptures and I'll let you go. Are you writing these scriptures down? Yes. Mark them in your Bible. Go back and read them later on. Okay. Proverbs chapter number three. Look at verse number five and six. Trust in the Lord. With all that. Y'all know it, boy. With all and lean not to thine own understanding. What's the rest of it? He shall do it. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Second Corinthians chapter number five. Rushing through this. Second Corinthians chapter number five. Five. Look at verse number seven. For we walk by faith and not by sight. It is not based upon, David, what you see. It's based upon what you know. 
Say that with me. For we walk by faith and not by sight. That's not strong enough. I want you to say it with some oomph. Say, for we walk by faith. What's the rest of it? One more scripture and we let you go. Romans chapter number four. Go back and read these scriptures, church. You're going to need them going into this new season. We don't want to abort anyone, want anyone's purpose, anyone's assignment to be aborted. We don't want anyone's new season to be hindered by anything or anybody. Can I get a loud amen? Amen. Romans chapter number four. Look at verse number, real quick, like 17, that, at 17 through 21. As it is written, I have made thee the father of many nations before him whom we be- he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things that be not as though they were, who against hope, believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. 19, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Verse number 21, and being fully persuaded, and being fully persuaded, Odessa, that what he had promised, he is able to perform it. Give the Lord a a rousing round of applause. Do it a little better than that. I said the Lord. Give it to the Lord. We're going home. I do ask you to please forgive me for the length of the service. This is very out of the ordinary for us, for me to be finishing at this time. And y'all know that. I try to get us out at decent time. But I, I was compelled by God to make sure that you got this today because we're going to need this. We're going into 2020 with a promise over our heads. But hear this now. It will not be without a fight. It will not be without a fight. And so this word, if you allow it, it will sustain you and push you on further down the road that this truly will be an epic season for you and for your house. One more time, give the Lord a hand of applause. Every tithe will stand. Those that's given you tithe.
from the well I have, you'll never thirst again. I dare you stop dancing for the never again. what season you're in in your life. This is your confession that you will always make.
you tonight. Y'all stop, because something else gonna stop. Y'all stop. AJ, get off this organ. Ha! I got it. I feel something stirring. AJ. Get him off the organ. I feel something brewing. I feel a breakout. Some of us almost didn't jump because we were comfortable. But because we did, 